there is freedom from trying to get from God what he's already freely given us in Christ. I'm free now to enjoy forgiveness rather than to try to get forgiveness. I'm free to, I'm free because I am now forgiven in Christ because of what Christ has done rather than living in bondage to guilt and trying to stay forgiven. I'm, you and I are free because we're in continual fellowship with God. Now, some people will say, well, you can go in and out of fellowship with God. The fellowship with God is not eternal. Fellowship with God is temporal, depending upon if you have any unconfessed sin in your life. That is not New Testament teaching. That is not New Covenant teaching. We are in eternal fellowship with God because we've been eternally forgiven by God and because the Spirit of Christ now eternally dwells in us. You and I have eternal fellowship with God. Now, the Lord is a spirit, and where the spirit of the Lord is, that's our hearts. That's 2 Corinthians 3.3. 3. You can also read about that in Galatians 4.6. There is freedom from the law of Moses. There is freedom from con a conditional relationship with God because everything in Christ is now complete. Verse 18, and we all who with unveiled faces, this, this is those who see the fullness of what Christ did for us on the cross. We see what the New Testament is. We're understanding the New Testament is not about books, but it's about blood. So those who, the veil is being removed. They're, 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 they're able to see these truths that Paul's talking about in these verses. So we all who with unveiled faces, this is verse 18, contemplate the Lord's glory. Now, what's the Lord's glory that we're contemplating? It's his grace. It's the New Testament. It's what Christ did for us at the cross. We're, 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 we're contemplating it. We're gazing upon grace is what that means. We're, we're, we're awed by the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ. And as we contemplate his grace, as we're awed by his grace, says we're being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory. The more we gaze at the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ freely given us, the more we gaze at the blood of Christ has forgiven us of all sin and cleansed us of, from all sin. And now we're righteous before God. The more we gaze at the grace of God through what Jesus did for us at the cross, then we're, we're going to be transformed into the image of Jesus because he was full of grace. We, so the more we contemplate the Lord's glory, we're being transformed into his image. This is verse 18, with ever increasing glory, continuing to grow. Notice, it's as we gaze. It's no struggle to grow. There's no effort to grow. It's simply gazing at what Christ did for us. And as we gaze upon what Christ did for us, we grow. Now, that scares religious people to death. Well, you're telling people they don't have to do anything. You're telling people they don't have to put effort into their spiritual growth. They're going to they're gonna get lazy. They're going to get apathetic. Well, what I see in Scripture is when people gaze upon what Christ did for us at the cross, when we begin understanding Christ indwells us and we're forgiven and righteous and under no condemnation, not under law but under grace, at peace with God, growth begins to happen. And again, that's what happened in Colossians chapter 1, 3 through 8. So as we contemplate upon the Lord's glory, that's his grace. We're being transformed into his image with ever increasing glory, which comes from the Lord, who is the spirit. All right. Paul calls this new covenant or this New Testament message. Paul's word for this is grace. Look at 2 Corinthians 4.15. Paul writes, all this, now he's referring up to the verses that he just wrote about the difficulties he faced when he delivered the good news of grace to people. So he went through amazing difficulties, very, very, a, a lot of hardships so that people could hear about grace. But Paul said, everything I go through to get grace to you is for your benefit. Why? How does grace benefit people? It transforms our lives. It changes us as the Holy Spirit writes the truth of the gospel of grace on us. It, Paul says, you're going to benefit from the truth that you're forgiven. 
You're going to benefit from the truth that you're righteous. You're going to benefit from the truth that you're eternally forgiven and you're eternally righteous and you're in eternal fellowship with God. And Christ eternally dwells within you. He says, you're going to benefit from that. You're going to be transformed by it. You're going to be changed by it. So Paul says, all of this is for your benefit so that the grace that is reaching more and more people may cause thanksgiving to overflow to the glory of God. Look what happens when people begin to gaze upon the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ, all that he's done for us. It produces gratitude in our hearts to God. We begin to see the greatness of God when we see the grace of God. And when we see the grace of God, we see the greatness of God and our hearts begin to overflow with gratitude. God, thank you so much that I'm forgiven. God, thank you so much that I'm righteous. Thank you so much that I'm eternally forgiven and, et and I'm eternally righteous and Christ eternally indwells me and I'm in eternal fellowship with you. We just begin thanking God for all he has done for us in Christ, which remember last week is how we take our stand against those who would come against us and try to get us back under a law-based relationship with God, a conditional-based relationship with God. As we, as we live with an attitude of thanksgiving for the God's grace to us, then those who will come to us and try to get us back under a performance-based relationship, a conditional-based relationship, it, we'll be able to withstand them when they come. So Paul says, this, this message that I'm taking into cities is called grace. Remember, who gave Paul the message to go into cities? The ascended Jesus. Paul's just fulfilling what Jesus gave him to do.